I decided to share with you today what I ate growing up and what is typical here in Spain. I'm currently in Spain visiting and there is a big snowstorm out there. So I want to share with you what I used to eat for breakfast in here and what is the most typical and how we substituted for the low carb anti-inflammatory approach. So yeah, as you can see, I have here a lot of food. So I'm going to start with milk. Milk was a big, big thing in my house growing up. Fresh milk, whole milk, because my father was a cowboy. He had a lot of cows and he um, we used to bring the milk from him without pasteurized we never got sick so the way we were treating the milk was boiling the milk two times to eliminate some of the bacteria that you don't want to put in your gut but we didn't do anything else and then the very very yummy thing about it the yummy yummy thing was that when you boil the milk you get like a thin layer of cream on the top. So we used to take that and storage to make a cake or we used to spread it in bread. It's like really, really yummy. So milk was a big thing, always a glass of milk, but really clean from my grandfather used to never put hormones or antibiotics to the cows. So that was a, a really, really good source. I grew up with that. And then what we were making when I was a kid, what we were making with the milk is a hot chocolate, which you can find it also in a lot of places in Spain. But the hot chocolate thing here is not liquid. The hot chocolate is dense. So how did we make, my grandfather used to make, my grandmother used to make the hot chocolate was from, not from powder like we make it now, but from chocolate bar. She used to use 100% chocolate bar and she melted the chocolate with the milk. And of course that was really bitter because it was 100%, so she was adding sugar. So the alternative when we shift to the low carb anti-inflammatory diet is to add stevia or monk fruit for a zero glycemic index sweetener. If you want to go more on the paleo side, maple syrup grade B or grade A, dark color robust taste, or honey, that will be your alternative. So we used to drink the hot chocolate for adults, of course, coffee, always was the main one. And we don't use espresso machines or anything like that. We always made the coffee in the regular uh, coffee machine, the Italian style coffee machine. And we added a little bit of the fresh non-pasteurized uh, milk in there or just black coffee. So it was very, very good. And another drink that we tend to drink also with our breakfast was uh, an is orange juice, but this is not the orange juice from the package that you buy at the supermarket. That is just basically sugar because it has been on a shelf for months and you don't have any nutrients in there anymore. This was from fresh, oranges every single day and actually I just squeezed the orange in here before talking to you. So this is the best, the best vitamin C booster orange juice. And um, what we were eating mostly different, like a few breakfast in here. So toast is a big one. We don't use butter here in Spain, like French. We use the liquid gold olive oil. So we use cold pressed extra virgin olive oil. So we get fresh bread every single bed, every single day from the market. Actually across my parents' house there is a, a bakery and they we wake up very very early to catch the warm still fresh bread. Um, so what we do we just toast the bread, we add some olive oil on it and you can just eat it like that or you can put some tomatoes tomatoes if you are on an anti-inflammatory diet are a no because it's um, it's an eye shade so you can just have your bread 
with your olive oil. When we are on low carb diet, grain free diets, we have to substitute this bread because bread um, is very high in starches and carbohydrates and usually not here in US, we don't have genetically modified grains, but in a lot of countries um, uh, we do. So the alternative, for example, in my book, The Ketorinian Diet Solution, I have recipes for breads, which is what usually people miss the most. So I have a recipe for French baguette, which um, is made with almond flour. You can use almond flour, coconut flour. For a paleo alternative, you can use cassava flour. And it's very, very simple to make. There is a vegan and a non-vegan option. Either way, so you just get the bread, you toast it, you put your olive oil, which is the liquid gold of the anti-inflammatory Mediterranean diet, and you eat it. If you put tomato, you can just slice the tomato and put it here, or you can make what in Catalonia we call pan tumaca, and you just wrap the tomato like this on top, and you just eat it, and it's delicious. But I say you can just avoid it if you are on an anti-inflammatory diet, you don't want nice sheets. The other thing that you can put also on top of your toast that is also very typical here in Spain is jamón serrano, or what a lot of people know by prosciutto, but here we call it jamón serrano. And you put a few slices on top of your olive oil and your tomato, and it's delicious. So usually we drink this with fresh pressed orange juice or you can have it with your coffee and that is really good another thing that we usually don't make all the time because it takes a while to make and i have a video on youtube how to make a spanish omelet i make it with my mother which is really good making it which is a tapa of a spanish omelet and this is something very typical to find on every single bar or cafe whenever you go to have breakfast and these omelets take around 45 minutes to make. It's just egg, potato, and onion, but you have to be very gentle, cook it very well, so it's gonna be delicious. And we make it with virgin olive oil, which have a higher smoke point than extra virgin olive oil. So this is another alternative. And of course, we have uh, churros. Churros is also really typical in, um, in Spain, basically churros is just a dough with flour on it and flour, egg and water, basically that. And it's, it's very simple, but it takes a while to make a lot of churros. So we go usually to the churreria. It's a type of bakery that specializes in making churros. And we just eat the churros with the coffee or the hot chocolate and they are also delicious. Alternative for churros. Also, in my book, The Keto Renian <laughs> Diet Solution, but my second book is all about desserts and sweets because a lot of people have a sweet tooth. I have a sweet tooth, and my mother has a sweet tooth, so she was asking me, Elena, you gotta make all these recipes on the low-carb anti-inflammatory approach. So I have especially a recipe for churros in here that is uh, using also almond flour, coconut flour to give it a crunch, some shantan gum to glue it and it's also very simple, give it a try as well and, and this would be it. one of the things that I wanted to say about the tomatoes that I was putting here on the bread is that look at how ugly is this tomato it is ugly, right? but it's delicious and beautiful. And why ugly means beautiful? Because this is non-genetically modified and it's organic. And all those tomatoes that we see at the supermarket all with the same shape, perfect. When you cut them, they don't even have a juice to do. They, they don't have any taste. These tomatoes are usually the real ones the ones that are non-genetically modified and they are organic. Actually, this one is from my neighbor's backyard. I was very lucky to get some tomatoes from here, uh, but still in organic stores, health food stores, always look for, for tomatoes. Tomatoes is one of the 
a fruit, it's not a vegetable, it's a fruit, that is sprayed with a lot of pesticides, a lot of pesticides. So yeah, I just wanted to jump in to bring you a little piece of the Mediterranean now that I am in Spain and how we can substitute all of this for the low carb approach. The healthy one, the healthiest one, because you have protein, all of them you make the dough, for example, with almond flour, you have protein. You need always protein in every single meal. So all of them are very healthy. And if you make the French baguette with the low carb approach, this is one of my favorite. Just olive oil or olive oil, you can rub. If you are not sensitive to FODMAPs, you can use garlic. And when you put the olive oil, you can also rub some garlic on the top. And that's a really good natural antimicrobial. It's one of the best antibiotics of the planet, but only if you are not sensitive to FODMAP, which are carbohydrates that are in certain foods that are fermentable, and garlic is a big one. So this was extra virgin olive oil, rub some tomato on the top, and if you want, you can put some jamón serrano if you find it, or just like this. So I hope you are gonna give a try to any of these. Remember, every single recipe can be substituted for the healthier alternative. So if you are on a low carb approach, almond flowers, coconut flowers, tiger nut flour for more paleo, cassava flour, those grain free flowers are a very good alternative to make bread or churros or things that require grains. If you want to incorporate some grains, but you want to be gluten free, I recommend going for flowers from quinoa, millet or buckwheat because those flowers are gluten free. They are higher in protein and lower in carbohydrates, but it's still grains, but are a good alternative if you are on a very strict diet, like for example, low histamine diet, low um, grain free diet millet, amaranth and buckwheat are very good alternatives for that. So give them a try, let me know. If you have tried any of those recipes, if you decide to incorporate any of these, I would love to hear what is your go-to breakfast. If you have breakfast in the morning, if you are not fasting, what is usually your go-to breakfast or what was the breakfast that you had growing up? As I said, my breakfast growing up was milk from my grandfather, or, or I use it for hot chocolate and then the toast with olive oil or tomato. So I would love to hear from you and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye bye.